When a crime is committed, evidence is submitted to a forensic laboratory for analysis. And my concern is that trace evidence analysis examinations are being eliminated in crime labs across the country. And that concerns me. You see, in a forensic laboratory, there are typically five areas of disciplines. That's drugs, firearms, serology DNA, and toxicology. Those can give you conclusive results. For instance, that white powder is heroin, or that DNA came from Mr. Theodore, or those bullets were fired from that gun. The trace evidence is more considered circumstantial evidence, because while we can identify and compare tiny things under a microscope, we can't always say that these two things were once the same. And forensic crime lab directors across the country are a little nervous about that. They, with the accreditation procedures that we have today, they like things to be more black and white. And so they're shying away from trace evidence. Here's some examples of trace evidence. Hairs, fibers, paint, glass, soil, mitable liquids, a lot of different things that under the microscope we can identify or compare, but I think need to be considered by courts in, in a trial. We also have to consider the CSI effect. Forensic science is popular these days. And so prosecutors are hesitant to go to trial without a forensic lab report because jurors are more informed. They expect to see forensic science in the court of law. And sometimes trace evidence is the only forensic evidence in the case. Now trace evidence is based on the cards exchange principle, which says that when two things come in contact with each other, there's always a transfer of some type of evidence. So what I'd like to do is take you through showing you some